Can you just tell me the uh, eight characters remaining in Street Fighter Five? <laughs> uh, no, I cannot. Uh, I'm I'm actually even worried about saying what the ones that are announced are because I'm <laughs> mix it up. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Born Free here. I had the opportunity to interview Matt Moylan, who is the director of publishing at Udon Entertainment and was the editor of this wonderful book here, for which I already did a video. So if you want to see that video check it out. This is the Street Fighter World Warriors Encyclopedia. Uh, the guy knows so much about Street Fighter and has done so much research. This is his job. This is just, this video is just a teaser, just a taste. So if you have the time, uh, check out the full interview. It's an hour. I know that's long, but it is kind of fascinating. Um, you can click the iCard up there in order to get to it and then stick around to the end because um, we may be able to do a return interview with Matt if there's enough questions that you guys have about the world of Street Fighter. Um, and also he's very interested in, he has, he has other franchises and um, he's interested to know your point of view on which other uh, probably less mainstream Capcom fighting game would you like to see turned into a comic book. So check it out and enjoy. Comics, but he forgot that Dan's dad was killed by Sagat and he had them sort of in a room together without mentioning it. I'm like, can't really not mention that, dude. I don't think they can just hang out and run into each other. <laughs> so, it was Sagat, Sagat and Dan. Uh, they're, they're they're in a scene together and it didn't come up. They're like, oh yeah, didn't you murder my dad? So, so my job kind of take make sure stuff like that uh, gets you know stays on 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 track and and everything. I mean, a lot of people consider canon what's in the games, but like what's actually in the games doesn't matter if it was in a manual maybe or even in a, a Japanese encyclopedia. Some people say just if it's in the games and it's canon, but even then, like a lot of the games contradict each other. A lot of the alpha games have like what if endings, which obviously even within the game can't all make sense. Um, so I mean, it's hard. It's it's really tough to say what is what's canon for Street Fighter. Um, we've, we've even asked uh, Capcom about this before. I know right now they're kind of trying to make an effort to like since they started the games again, Street Fighter Four and Street Fighter Five fit together, but. Um, uh, Eric Coe's actually, he asked uh, Shoei-san about it. He's a longtime Capcom guy. And he told Eric that, yeah, all the games are kind of their own continuity. Even though it's, they mostly fit together, but they don't always. <laughs> so they're kind, of their, they're kind of their own universe, almost, each game. Even, like, besides, besides stuff like the what-if endings that contradict each other, like, people are going to make mistakes, too. So stuff doesn't always make sense. Like, I don't know if you... Do you know... Uh, the story of like guys masters well i mean in so in street fighter i think it was whatever alpha game he was first in uh they show his they show a, a i should have looked this up beforehand but uh, but it's either one of his endings or one of his intros um he it shows his master ziku so guys the like 39th i have to look at my own encyclopedia he's the 39th master of bushin ryu and there's only one master of bushin ryu at any one time you sort of like pass it down to the next guy um and uh the guy before him was ziku and uh, now in Final Fight, which is where Guy originally appeared, whatever the current Final Fight game that was coming out at the same time, they gave him another master called Jen Ryusai, who's uh, Maki's dad. Uh, so they said this guy was the previous Bushin Ryu master. So already they've got two games contradicting each other. <laughs> but uh, eventually they just decided, like, say, because Jen Ryusai is kind of, uh, he's kind of older. So they decide he's like one more guy above Ziku. So it goes like uh, Jen Ryuse, uh Ziku, and then Guy. So I mean, so stuff doesn't even within the within the official Capcom stuff. Stuff doesn't always work out. They have to make fixes. I don't think I don't know if Capcom will be even willing to say this, but there's kind of a real life Sagat and Ryu that they're based on. I don't know if it's it might not even like it might not even be official. Or maybe it's just coincidence, but if you read the story of these two guys, it's very Street Fighter. There's this, there's this karate master in the 70s? I think it was the early 70s. You can look it up online. It's not hard to find. But, uh, and he, was, uh, the, he, was, he came up with this new form of karate, and at that time, the top, uh, the top martial arts in the world was Mai Tai. So he went to Thailand and started challenging all these Mai Tai fighters to to rounds like in the streets <laughs> so it's kind of like street fighter so he's challenging these mai tai guys and then the top top mai tai fighter decides like oh i heard about this awesome karate guy i wonder i wonder if he's actually any good i'm going to send my uh, my uh apprentice to go fight him 
first. So that's kind of like Adon, right? Uh, um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna send my protege to go fight him, and they fought, and the karate guy wins. And so he's like, oh, let's actually let's arrange a fight. So they had planned like a televised fight that was gonna air, um, but they never fought because the Mai Tai guy was gunned down by gangsters before they before the fight happened. So they never actually fought. What? Uh, do you know why Twelve is named Twelve? That's kind of neat. I have no idea. Tell me. So there's uh, an episode of uh, Ultra Seven, which is one of the Ultraman shows in Japan. Uh, I think it's from another '70s show. Uh, and in one of the episodes, there are these aliens that come to Earth, and they've like destroyed their own planet with nuclear weapons, and they've come. So I think it's something like they've come to conquer Earth now. So because their planet isn't livable anymore. So they're basically the bad guys, and they kind of look like, kind of look something like twelve, but uh, but that episode is actually banned in Japan because it puts a basically because it puts a negative spin on nuclear was it nuclear uh, bomb survivors because they're like they've you know they've destroyed their their planet with nuclear weapons. These are the survivors, but they're bad guys. So that was kind of like a touchy subject in Japan. Um, I mean, you think in the seventies is only like thirty years after Hiroshima. Um, so, uh, they, that episode is banned in Japan and that is episode number 12 of that show. Ah, so like, 12. <laughs> like a news reporter. Yeah. I've got, <laughs> like, just so I don't forget anything. Um, well, I've got actually next to my pile of books, I have handwritten notes about Street Fighter five right over here. <laughs> okay, just, just read those out. <laughs> yeah. I mean, on that note, like. How closely are you working with Capcom in regards to future storylines and Street Fighter Five? And how much like I said, they're they're keeping us informed, but telling us like things could change still. Um, like any game, things could change the last minute. But they're pretty they're pretty tight on security too on this one. They're not they're not uh, just like here's everything, here's every character design, here's everything that's gonna happen. Like here's the important stuff. Keep this in mind. I'm like okay, cool. Um, we'll stay on we'll stay on top of that. Um, we are working working with them on some some cool projects to promote the comics with the game, though. Um, so it changes all the time. So even though Capcom's kept us informed about the the story, it might not be the exact final story of the game. So we don't want to commit majorly to things, but uh, we're kind of keeping our plans in line with what we know of Street Fighter Five, um, and so we don't like kill somebody who's going to be a big part of Street Fighter Five. Or stuff like that, <laughs> you know. Well, I mean, talking of that, this is this is the this is the first one, right? The yeah. First Street Fighter Five comic. So, uh, with that book, did you work closely with Capcom on that in regards to like this is the first Street Fighter Five book? Yeah, I mean, they gave us all the designs for Charlie before uh, he came out. Actually, it, like they changed ever so slightly, like his, uh, you know, his. Uh, blue and skin pattern like which parts are blue and which parts are are, are old like original charlie um it, you know the, that sort of pattern changed a bit by the time we actually finished the game so we had to make some adjustments to his design at the end but uh uh they definitely gave us an outline of what charlie's like in the game so we wanted to make sure uh it's got it'll make more sense i think when you read the game but we kind of wanted to I don't, know, I don't want to spoil too much, but we kind of wanted to set something up of why something made sense in the game. Are we going to see Nikali in uh, future Udon books, comics? Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, we're going to definitely include him at some point uh, and also kind of work in some of the new looks, the new like costumes and designs. Not everybody right away. Like, we've already got our comic series going, and uh, we want to start out with like classic Ken, but maybe at some point we'll bring in. Street, we'll, we'll have him shift to Street Fighter Five. Ken, he's a little harder because I think he's, I think his hair is even a little longer, so it can't just grow instantly. Are there any other books or manga from Japan that you think are, are worth people looking at? I know you guys actually sell some of that stuff in your, you know, through Udon. Yeah. Um, well, we've done uh, a lot of Street Fighter mangas. Uh, some of them are interesting in that they they've definitely influenced the games. Like uh, the Street Fighter Two manga by, uh, let me look quick on my shelf. Who drew Kan Kanzaki? I think. Da -na 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 -na. Yeah, Masomi Kanzaki did the Street Fighter Two manga series, and that's the first appearance of Goken. 
Um, I don't think he create he didn't create that character. He's I think he's mentioned in the in the in the extra materials for Street Fighter Two, but it's the first time you saw him visually, and uh, he's a little different. But he's mostly like like how Goku ended up. He's got like a beard, and he's big and like a mountain, and so he definitely sort of influenced the design of of uh, Goken. Uh, and then in the Street Fighter uh, Alpha and Sakura comics by uh, I forget all these Japanese names. Uh, Kanzaki and Nakahira. Yeah, Nakahira Sensei. So Nakahira drew Street Fighter Alpha, Street Fighter Sakura Ganbaru, and Street Fighter 3 Ryu Final. So those are three. He also drew a Kami series that we haven't uh, localized that was published by, I think to- Tokyo Pop did that before Udon started doing his manga. So he's done those four series, and uh, he's actually the original creator of Karin. So they put her, he put uh, her in. Okay. In the Sakura uh, series, and they eventually made her a real character in the games. So that's cool. And it was also his idea to uh, basically he created Dark Ryu, like Evil Ryu. It was the first appearance of an Evil Ryu is in the mangas. So the so, whole Dar- Dark Hado thing wasn't really an idea before that. I mean, I so there, there was uh, there was like there was like Akuma, but uh, it wasn't really an idea that it would like take over somebody. It was just like that's like Akuma's powers, so they eventually made it. That's oh, it's something that could take over you. It could even take over Ryu. So it was Nakahiro who first created that idea of Dark Ryu, which was neat. You're telling me some interesting stuff about some research you've done on like the design process and how things have changed. Um, and I guess one that pop, popped out was the Oro story. Uh, yeah, that's something we asked Ono-san about. Um, so this is his recollection because he. He worked on the Street Fighter 3 games a bit, I think, doing music um, before he did uh, Capcom Fighting Evolution, which is his first, his first fighting game. I guess it's very taboo to have so, some Japanese cultural thing. It's very taboo to have a crippled person fighting. <laughs> um, so that's what he told us. And he told us that's kind of the reason why Oro has an arm tied behind his back when the original idea was to have him only be have one arm because they just didn't think it would fly. So I'm not, I'm not sure if it was... How, how early in the design process that happened. But I mean, if you look at his design, you can kind of imagine like, yeah, I guess he, it looks like he just has one arm. But uh, yeah, it's kind, of, it's kind of interesting to find out those details. Have there been instances where Udon has influenced Capcom? Well, they've told us that we have. I mean, the, like besides us contributing to some of the, like not to some of the games, doing art or like we did, we did all of the sprites for Street Fighter II HD Remix, which was a huge project. But uh, in terms of story, I mean, uh, Ono-san actually told us that he, how much he liked uh, our version of Ibuki, and that kind of influenced how he interpreted her in the game. So that was pretty cool. So I hope we see some more of that in Street Fighter V. That'd be really cool. How about I I'll leave you with a Street Fighter factoid? I think I told you this one in San Diego, which is why why is uh, Ryu's headband red in Street Fighter Two when it was white in Street Fighter One? And I can tell you what it is. According to Akimon, the reason is they forgot. <laughs> I forgot what they, they forgot it wasn't that it was white, so it's kind of an interesting uh, random fact for Street Fighter. <laughs> if, if people are interested in asking questions, um, you know, obviously they can leave them in the comments below, uh, and we can do one of two things. Uh, we'll figure it out, but we can either you know have you come back and answer some of those comments, or if there's a whole bunch, then maybe we can do a follow up interview. Um, but I, I. I uh, I was going to open it up to some of the other franchises that you work on. So you, you, what are the main franchises that you work on? Like Udon in general? I mean, well, you, you, <laughs> I mean, you, well, I, run, I have a hand in everything pretty much, but uh, I mean, Capcom wise, we do our life, our, our comic licenses for street fighter, dark stalkers, final fight and rival schools. Um, but we also do a lot of stuff with mega man. Uh, we do just read off my shelf. Uh, we do, we've got a Devil May Cry art book. We've done a couple of those. We've done a couple of Resident Evils. Um, but in terms of comics, it's just those four, the Street Fighter, uh, Street Fighter, Darkstalkers, Rival Schools, Final Fight. I'd actually like to expand that. So maybe, maybe we'll look at that in the future. The Capcom Fighting Tribute book got a great response. So we'd love to tackle some of those properties someday, like maybe Power Stone or maybe, uh, Captain Commando or, uh, some of the really weird ones like battle circuit or something like that so i don't know maybe people can can say what you'd like to see a, 
a Capcom fighting game comic of too. I'd love to hear that too. Say so that, okay, so that again, a Capcom fighting game? Uh, well, yeah, what Capcom, what Capcom fighting game would people like to see as a comic? I'm, yeah. I'm totally happy to come back and do another interview or answer questions or whatever. No.